Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cowley. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a crazy and sick individual, Marcus Wesson. Marcus was born on August 22nd, 1946 in Kansas. He was the oldest of four kids. Marcus grew up with his mom being a religious woman, but on the other hand, his father was an alcoholic and a child abuser who abandoned the family when Marcus was only a child. By the early 1960s, Marcus and his family had moved to California. Marcus would later drop out of high school and join the military, serving from 1966 to 1968 as an ambulance driver. Shortly after leaving the military, Marcus moved in with an older woman named Rosemary and her eight children in San Jose, California. 1971, Rosemary gave birth to Marcus' first child, a son. In 1974, Marcus began violating Rosemary's eight-year-old daughter named Elizabeth. Later on, Marcus creepy ass married Elizabeth when she turned 14 and he was 27. Four months later, she gave birth to their first child. Eventually, the couple had 10 kids together, including one infant kid who died. One of Elizabeth's younger sisters left her own seven children with them to raise, including they 10. They had 17 to raise. She claimed she was unable to care for them due to her drug problem. Marcus never held a steady job and he lived off welfare and had his working adult children give him their earnings. In 1989, Marcus was convicted of welfare fraud and perjury. The family often lived in ran-down shacks, boats, and vacant houses. Marcus was abusive towards his wife and his kids. He prevented Elizabeth from participating in the kids' upbringing. He homeschooled the kids and taught them from his own handwritten Bible that focused on Jesus being a vampire. Marcus told the kids that he was God and had them refer to him as Master or Lord. He taught the kids to be prepared for Armageddon and said that the girls were destined to become his future wives. Bro was a straight creep. Marcus would have his own rules in the house, and that involved violating his kids and his nieces as young as eight or nine years old. Their responsibilities included washing Marcus' dreads, scratching his armpits, and his head. The girls were not allowed to talk to their cousins or their male siblings or their mother. Male and female children were physically abused, and Marcus violated two of his daughters and three of his nieces, beginning at the age of eight. Each of five of the girls became pregnant. Before March 12, 2004, Marcus had declared his intention to relocate his daughters and their children to Washington where his parents lived. On March 12, 2004, several family members of Marcus' extended family, along with his two nieces, rebelled against him on his family compound, demanding the release of their children. Fresno police were summoned to what was described as a child custody issue and a standoff ensued. Marcus told the police to wait at the door and disappear back into the home. When he came back, his clothes were all bloody. As no police testified that they did not hear gunshots being fired. Shortly after though, other witnesses at the standoff testified that they did hear gunshots fired. In the aftermath, police discovered nine bodies, including two of Marcus' daughters and seven of their children, each in a bedroom filled with antique coffins. Each victim had been fatally shot through the eye. Marcus' other children who were not present inside the house survived the incident. Marcus was a real sick dude, and a lot of his victims he killed were his daughters and nieces' kids he had with them. He killed five kids who we had with his daughters, ages eight to one, and two kids who we had with his nieces, ages seven to one. The two other victims were his daughters who were 25 and 17. At trial, Marcus' public defenders presented that his 25-year-old daughter committed all the crimes and committed suicide. The murder weapon was found near her side and she had DNA evidence on it. The jury declined to find that Marcus fired all the fatal shots but convicted him of murder anyway, presumably finding that he persuaded his children to enter into a suicide pact. Marcus' sons had a completely different experience than his daughters. One of Marcus' sons expressed disbelief that his father was the killer. As he stated, he looks very dangerous, but he's such a gentle guy. I can't believe he did it. Marcus' sons were raised away from their sisters as contact between the two was discouraged. As a result, the male children of Marcus knew very little about the twisted things he did. Marcus was convicted of nine counts of first-degree murder on June 17, 2005. He also was found guilty of 14 other counts. Marcus was sentenced to death on June 27, 2005. He is currently in San Quentin State Prison. Marcus is now 76 and lived his life on death row. Dude was a sick dude, having reportedly over 18 kids with his daughters and his nieces, and being the one who took their lives. He deserves the sentence he got, and worse. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.